Hey, Prime 6 Math Rogers, this is Coach Saiful with your daily dose of math mastery. And today we're going to go into the questions for circles for your assessment paper number three. So please have your assessment paper next to you so that you can easily reference to what I'm talking about. Okay, so first of all, before I even start, I want to make sure that I give you a crash course in circles. Um, circles is one of the topics which is really simple. There's only two formulas in it and it's very, 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 very simple if you know how to look for the radius as well as circumference. But before I jump ahead of myself, let's go in and actually talk about a little bit more about circles, all right? So circles, what do you understand about circles? Okay, so a circle basically looks like, um, hold on, what's wrong here? Okay, a circle basically looks like this, right? This is a circle. Okay, this is not a perfect circle, but okay, it's a very badly drawn circle. It looks more like a, <laughs> it looks more like a ball. But anyway, whatever, it, whatever it is, this is a circle. Okay, and a circle has a few things. Okay, let's imagine number one, right smack in the middle of the circle, there is something called an origin. In other words, that is the center of the circle. Okay, that is the center of the circle. And I wanted to show you a few things. Number one, this length between that origin to any part of the circle. That means any part. It could be this, it could be this, it could be this, whatever it is. As long as it touches the origin and then it touches the um, the, end, the, uh, the outside part of the circle, it means that that thing, that measurement, is actually something called a radius. Okay, it's called what? A radius. I'm going to write it for, uh, here for you. R-A-D-I-U-S. A radius. So number one we have in red is radius, okay? Now, the other thing that we have is actually something called the diameter, the diameter or diameter, whatever you call it. Basically, it's from one end of the circle to it goes through the origin and it goes to the other end of the circle, okay? And this is called the diameter. Again, it doesn't matter where, it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere you want. As long as it touches um, the two parts of the circle as well as goes through the origin, the center of the circle, it is called the diameter. So that's a D. How do you spell diameter? It's D-I-A-M-E-T-E-R. Okay, a diameter. So again, let's just recap. The one in red, in other words, from the middle all the way to one end of the circle is called a radius. And the, the, blue, the one in blue is from one end of the circle through the origin to the center, through to the other end of the circle is called the diameter. Now, what one thing do you notice about this? Okay, what one thing you will notice is actually diameter is actually equals to how many times of radius? The diameter is actually equivalent to two radiuses. Can you see there's one here? Okay, one radius here and one more radius here. Let me just draw this in black since, uh, so that you can see it. There's one radius here and there's one more radius here. Okay, in other words, and diameter is actually equals to two radiuses, okay? So now that you got that part down, the other thing that you must know is how to find the circumference, or in other words, the, this one in black. In other words, the perimeter, okay? We call it the circumference. So what is the length of this black color line? In other words, what is the length of the circle if you were to lay it out in a line, okay? So that is basically found by, um, by the formula, circumference equals to 2 pi r. Okay, circumference equals 2 pi r, and finally we have we need to find out what's the area of a circle. And this is the most famous, uh, what's it called, formula, which is area equals to pi r squared. How do you remember this? Just look at how you find, um, what's that called? You just look at how you'll find um, a circumference, and you will see there's a 2 here, right? An area is basically just bringing it over to the other side and getting you a small 2. And so pi r squared. Pi r squared, in other words, it means pi times r times r. That's what it means, okay? And the other thing you must understand is that pi. What is pi? Pi is basically a number, okay? The pi, pi I'm going to write it down here, is actually equal to 3.14214, blah, 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 okay? So that is a very long number. It's a never-ending number, okay? But what mathematicians have found is that this pi can actually be used to calculate um, the length or the circumference or the area of a circle. You see? So pi is this, and it can equal to 3.142, 3.14, or whatever it is, depending on the question, and it can also equal to 22 over 7. If you go ahead and put in your uh, calculator, 22 divided by 7, which is what I'm going to do right now, 
you will actually see that it gives you the answer of 3.142857 blah, blah blah right and that is actually almost the same as 3.142 so that is what pi can become so now I've given you a crash course let's go into the first question immediately okay so let's take a look at the first question the first question um, says this radius of circle A is twice that of circle B find the area of the shaded part okay so first off let's take a look at the circle B you can see that in here in here the radius of circle B is 3 cm so how do I find the area of this circle can I find the area of the circle of course we can and it says that radius of circle A is two times or twice that of circle B so we immediately know that the radius of circle A is three times two good job so in other words we get 6 cm and if we know the area of the if you know the radius of the big circle can we find the area of the big circle of course we can um, so how do we find the area of the shaded part the area of the shaded part is basically the big circle, the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. In other words, area of circle A minus area of circle B. So, let's do that first. So let's find area of circle B, since they give us the area, uh, they give us the radius. Area of circle B actually equals to pi r squared. Again, remember, pi r squared, pi r squared. In this case, they told us to take um, pi as 3.14. And the radius we found out was 3 squared. 3 squared, or I'm going to put it as 3 times 3 first so that you understand what it is. And we're going to go into our calculator and we're going to put in 3.14 times 3 times 3, which gives you 28.26. So that is the area of the circle, 28.26 cm squared. Um, circle A, sorry. Circle B, circle B. Small little circle, okay? Now, area of circle A, what is that? Since we know that area, uh, the, the, what they called? The radius of circle A is double that of circle B. Again, it equals to pi r squared, which equals to 3.14 times what? 3 times 2? 6. So 6 squared. In other words, 6 times 6, which equals to 6 times 6, which is 36. So 3.14 times 36 is going to give you 113.04 cm squared. So that's the area of circle A. Now, how do we find, let's take a look at how do we find that uh, area of the shaded part, area of circle A minus area of circle B. So let's just take out our uh, calculator again. Basically, the area of the shaded part equals to 113.04 minus 28.26. Gives you 84.78. So we can write down here, okay, area of shaded part, the answer here. equals to area of circle A minus circle B and so you will get 113.04 minus 28.26 which gives you the answer of as you can see on my calculator here 84 oops 84 point 78 cm squared and that's it it's very simple that is the answer for question one yeah that's it so um that is the first question for the circles we're going to go into every question right now uh, in a while um, but first i just want to make sure that i remember how to give you this tip of the week uh, tip tip of the week <laughs> the code of the week the code of the week is simple it's very big here very bold it says believe in you okay one thing that i noticed is that no, no amount of preparation if you are so prepared and you don't believe in yourself that is going to hurt your chances of actually scoring an a or an a star on your math exam listen you if you put in the work if you've already prepared guess what the last thing is up to you right you have to believe in yourself once you believe in yourself you will get more confident um, you know how to get the answers immediately and you are very sure about it and that's what's going to get you your A stars. Alright? With that, this is Coach Seifel signing off. You are a math prodigy. Good job.